Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mini Proposal Workshop. And today we are going to catch up a bit what we have uh, done so far and do some planning, uh, quick planning or overview for the future workshops, and then dive into proposal title and see if uh, can we come up with a good title. And also, I'm looking to hear a bit of feedback uh, how if we should scope down the proposal and which direction we could go because it looks like right now we are scaling quite large with this proposal um but yeah looking up to their opinions so when we started um with the problemizations each template actually has like an expected time frame how long it could take and then below i took like notes uh, code blocks of 30 minutes that how much we actually spent time on it. So we had this uh, interesting situation where we spent uh, three times more time on solution ideation than usually. So I think that could be that this is one of the reasons I think we might have to scope a little more down and spend here because the rest of the chapters, uh, they will basically scale based on your the solution ideation selected and problem ideation and if we start with solution which is three times bigger it, there is a risk that our rest of the chapters will also be three times bigger and as you can see they are we are almost like uh, 30 percent in our, our work and then in, in addition we also have this aggregating roles budget and estimates where the full details come out and that's another huge chunk of the work which is on the way um, so that's to keep in mind um, also, and also, but another side, let, we don't have to kind of stick to all the chapters. And that's why I'm like thinking like, let's be, let's be realistic here and let's uh, see how can we best make out of our collaboration um, instead of trying to make it like fit to the workshop itself. So as we kind of go through this, it's also builds us the material, how can we future be better at uh, doing ideation for proposals in larger groups. I'm gonna start with the question. Uh, what kind of components are required to build the, and basically, with the sustainable open source community. And so right now you're just trying to extract the feature list, essentially? Yeah, all the features which are basically, I think are attractive and which needs to be built. Um, I'm, putting, I'm putting the notes on the left side, on the below basically. <laughs> I feel like what I see missing when I join communities like Catalyst and Deep Fund and Gimbal Labs and C4C is that a lot of good stuff comes out during meetings. A lot of uh, good knowledge is shared, whether it's through Discord or any kind of uh, conversation tool. Um, and then it's difficult to recover that or retrieve that information. So community, community collaboration is its own pillar. And then what, what tools could help enhance that? I think the knowledge management system connected to the community collaboration tools, so something like Discord or, or whatever, and importing that information as knowledge into the knowledge management system um, then you can extract the value from the knowledge management system. So integrating with any kind of communication or even creating a platform for those conversations to happen. And I think that is in there somewhere where we talked about something like a Cardano forum. Um, however, there was, there was a lot of good feedback that, that, on the contrary, said that's a bad, a poor experience, the Cardano forum itself. Um, so, I, I mean, at some point, I'd like to explore, explore that. 
somebody put down permissions from the community and I see you are putting down governance. Does anybody want to add more what it's meant by permission from the community? Yeah, I added that, but I think I misunderstood the question then. Well, that is something I'm I've been thinking about. So it is on the right, you know, page. Um I hope to build a community center so the community organizer can create an account, start using this tool, and then inject all that, the knowledge from their meetings and so forth. But then community members can actually find their community and get access to that dashboard, that community's dashboard. They can extract value, they can add value, you know, they can kind of interact with the knowledge management system of that community. And uh, there's a lot of details in my mind of, of how the community can apply permissions if they choose to. They can be a completely public and open community. Anybody can join. Maybe uh, this particular community wants only their members to have access to their knowledge management system. So maybe you have to own an NFT or um, have X number of tokens from their project or whatever, whatever their requirements are, we can implement mm -hmm. that. Um, there could be two different types of dashboards. You have your community members um, that, and we talked about this, I think in a previous meeting, the community members that are, are interactive and uh, contributors, they want the detailed information, but then you kind of have like your YouTubers and, uh, high level investors that really just care about a summary of what's happening with this project. Well, that can be presented and packaged, you know, in, in, in one way. So there, I mean, permissions do have a role here. Are there any thoughts on, on that? Yeah. I add that uh, basically it's a feature to enable data sharing between groups. And that's basically done with consensus tools, which are then pointed by that. But it's not really run by your platform or anything. It's like operational activities and you have basically features to enable to do that, which means that community collaboration would require also operations to establish norms and standards so they have like a starting point to start with and from that they are able to kind of come together what are the required consensus tools and these are the features which can be enabled in data sharing between groups and dashboard is basically uh, affected by that how you, you have a comment in there about permissionless network principle and its open source aspects. Um, and I know your audio's having some trouble. Um, so I was hoping you could elaborate on, because my thought is let the community decide. Do they want it to be permissioned? Do they want it to be permissionless? Do they want to open it up? What are the parameters and kind of allow the community to sort of figure that out? Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Uh, the privacy that the data content, uh, has it been considered in any aspects? Because once we get a lot of some, the information from the community that, that your two wants to comply, document, and everything. Uh, in the, that process, how is privacy taken care of? Because I believe, let's say, in a workshop or in a meeting, in a man management meeting that you are documenting, some privacy aspects people may say because they are talking. How that will be dealt with? That Has that been considered? Yeah, good question. Um, it definitely has been considered. I can't say that we have uh, an ideal solution yet, but um, there's a couple of, of aspects and, and how you would or where you would actually implement that. Um, so one thought is at the account itself. So at, at the root 
of these permissions, um, they could indicate whether or not the information in, in their community or in their knowledge management system is sensitive and confidential. If it is, then it has to be permissioned, right? You, you can't just allow it to be public because they're indicating this information, there might be some sensitive or confidential information in this. So now it has to be uh, a permissioned account and then they sort of have to manage who has access. Um, then a next step down is maybe we can give them a, a toggle switch option where they can select specific uh, policies. So SOC, GDPR, or some of those, those compliant um, policies that are, are global scale. And then if they apply that, we can have an AI bot that's identifying those items. And then I haven't figured out yet, does it go in its own database that's protected and it has you know all the necessary security policies applied to it or does it stay in the same database and it's just flagged and tagged as sensitive information not really entirely sure how how that's going to act but i'd like to uh, um, implement and enforce soc gdpr all the, the typical policies at the account level uh, they're indicating whether or not their content needs to abide and be compliant with these policies then we have AI tools that can help identify that content and then do something with it, you know, um, obfuscated or, or whatever, sorry. Or don't do anything at all. Thank you, Kurt. That's a very, that, that, I think that's a, a good solution. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think it solves everything, but it's, it's a start that they have yes. some assurance that you know they're protected yeah yeah i we as a starting point uh i think i i would be satisfied with the for what you will the solution which is the let's say the traditional solution applied to the project via ai uh i, I, I would be safe participating in the project in the beginning if that in place. Thank you. Thank you. I think I was able to capture uh, some features added also in the privacy stuff, which uh, stays in the left side. Do we want to spend a little time on different AI bots and come up with more solutions so that we just have given out all the thoughts so what the, I captured here was also captured previously was this tool should be extended with an extra framework to find action items. This tool should be extended with an ability to, to analyze group of meetings and then also differ, well, differentiating the group meetings by most recurring questions, most controversial topics, and so basically having a sentiment analysis. If any other ideas come up, then it's you can add in here. Then this tool should support topics which is tied in with purpose and basically able to differentiate the uh, off-topic, then creating meeting minutes, creating uh, meeting summaries. And these are basically the features which I was able to capture. Um, any more stuff you wouldn't want to add. And of course, biggest one is export transform data, but that's um, that's not really an option to take. It's a, or well, it is, it's a, but it's very important because, because it feels like it. Um, why did I think export transform data is an um, important element? Because if you are going to get an answer, we need a way to kind of get it out of AI bots. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot that I, you know, want to build into this, but it, it's, it's a lot, right? I don't know if this is the appropriate, because the I'm looking at the scope you have, which is uh, find action items, sentiment, recurring questions. And in that scope, it's also identifying any issues, risk factors, 
requirements, decision items, um, remind me later type of uh, category where it, it resurfaces when it sees something related. It says, oh, hey, you told me to remind you later. It seems like you're dealing with this topic now, so I'm going to remind you now. Um, and then event-based um, triggers or, or metrics. So yeah, that's just, it's a lot. I don't know <laughs> if it's appropriate to put them all down at this scope down level or, or what? Yes, yes. Um, that uh, event planning was a great idea. So, but that's also probably will split into uh, creating a meeting item. Mm -hmm. And it could also mean, but plan, can we make AI to plan an event? Because that would require then integration with everybody's Google Calendar or something. Jeez. And I do hope to, yeah, like actually be able to say, create a calendar item or create an event and then uh, invite these people. And as long as these people have a insight.iq account and they have it integrated to their calendar then we don't need to know anything else at that point right um we're able to sort of do that but if they're not then it may just make a note that you need to invite joe or whomever um because they they don't have an insight.iq account oh yeah i like uh... so it would be nice yeah. to and basically, Manage yeah, that's event. that's that's an uh, event planning also related to creating an action item. So creating an action item of find these people <laughs> to this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you could even say things like add uh, this to the list of agenda items for such and such event. You know that that it's aware of, um, and then it could just add it to the agenda items list or you know whatever the the use case is. Um, let's see what would that I, be I, the, the chat response? So you type in chat commands, or that will be voice commands. So you will say, oh, Okay, let's uh, add you, you, and you into this group to this day, and you move on. And uh, from audio, the event is planned, or we are expecting that starting with chat paste first. So, um there's two ways I was hoping or planning to interact with this. One is audio. And if so, if our bot joins the meeting, uh, we would actually need an additional like integration plugin. So if it's Zoom and we needed to do this, because we need a button to be able to say like record or prompt or something, and then your audio is your prompt. Um, then the other one is through our dashboard. You know, you can you can actually use text to prompt these bots from the dashboard. But then inside the meeting, you can use audio. Uh, but if we want it to actually respond and have that conversation piece, then I'm assuming the text response needs to be an actual integration. It can't just be a participant in the meeting. Because there needs to, unless it's in the chat, but that just seems kind of, I don't know. I'm thinking audio, a button that lets you record and and make a prompt, a specific prompt that's outside of the the streaming audio, and that's where you you press it and say, okay, I want to do this. Or you could just have trigger words, where you ask insight iq or some word, you know, trigger word is used, and then that is. Then you tell it what the context of the command is. Um, however, if we wanted that to be live, then I, I don't see that being a smooth interaction, like a button that says, I want to complete some action or automate something. Then you just speak to it. That, that's kind of how I was envisioning it. But I'm open to any feedback. Um, from that discussion, I think then the focus is more on audio, AI bots, and then let's just drop the text version for now and keep it like that. However, uh, that did bring up 
like features to upload audio file, upload video file, and options for the dashboard. And these are actually not tools, these are just ways to insert data. Yeah, that's going to be a big one, I think. Um, like like uh, Tom said previously, if Catalyst could come in and just say, all right, every single uh, Catalyst meeting, town hall, vote, proposal, everything's been recorded, then we can just have one single day where somebody uploads absolutely everything. That just establishes their knowledge management system. Uh, so then we can actually, you know, pull extract value from previous two years, two and a half years of Catalyst. And I guess actually the most content probably is or is on actually on Swarm YouTube channel <laughs> because mm -hmm. that is like very many different the topics gone through and some See, and advice. I, I feel like Swarms because you're right. Swarm has captured way more data input insights feedback from the community than catalyst itself has so if if swarm created an inside that iq account i mean i just i'm thinking about the amount of value that they have and then they can regenerate that value again by by surfacing it it's like i feel like that would be a good use case i just realized if you put github because then when you bring up to the swarm you realize that well technically we have data sources in GitHub. Well, I mentioned Marabor here already, but if we do a GitHub integration, would we need to teach the bot how to scrape that data from there? Or it's just that here is a repository address, figure it out yourself, or we need to somehow figure out how to feed specific files to them. Yeah, good question. Um, and my thoughts, I have had some thoughts on that. My thoughts on that topic is each integration point. So Discord, GitHub, Zoom, well, not Zoom, but uh, Miro, any of those other, you know, maybe Slack or something. Um, each of those integrations, we have two options. Do we clone that information or sync that information so grab it and pull it into the knowledge management system and use that to base the knowledge management or do we is it just an endpoint that it can query right so it has an as long as there's an api uh in that tool then it can just search and query or get from that API endpoint. So it doesn't need to actually onboard that information. It's just saying, oh, well, go here and look for this information and find it. So in your case, Gitbook, I'm thinking that we could create a specific AI model that just goes and analyzes data structure. How, how do you have your Gitbook? And then it should be able to produce content using that same structure. Um, but if you wanted to be able to query your knowledge management system, your insight.iq dashboard, and that information is say in Gitbook, it wouldn't have access to that unless it actually you know, synced that data down. So, uh, or if you told it, you'll find this in Gitbook, well, then it knows, okay, I'm gonna reach this API endpoint, but it doesn't search its KMS, it just goes directly to Gitbook. So those are some considerations at every, I feel like at every integration endpoint. Okay. Well, then that's a good thing to keep in mind. I leave that GitHub integration there because why I brought it here was that in GitBook, we have several communities documenting all the videos, sometimes even timestamping, but then going into like purposes, visions, and then some include like proposal information and like all kinds of re relevant information. And in Swarm, we even have the transaction of stuff, which then comes into question. Do we, <laughs> that I'm, I'm just going to add it here, it's just as an option. We technically have a Google Sheet. Yeah. Of Google Forms, Google Forms, surveys, Survey Monkey. Yep. <laughs> But th this is not just a typical 
Google Sheet, but uh, well, yeah, okay, Google Sheet, yes, but for what? And oh, that's okay. Okay, that's a good point. So we put the Google Sheet integration. Uh, but what I'm trying to provide here is a swarm treasury contribution report. So, because there is like a huge ton of information of actions with what people are doing. And I wonder if that somehow can be used as a capturing insight. So, yeah, I think it's valuable um, to build the knowledge management system, but to build a tool that leverages that information it come to me, it comes down to the question, okay, what would you do with that? Um, we did hope to build something where you can distribute funds based off of maybe what you find in a bounty board, whether it's D work or GPTE or something like that. Um, but yeah, what would you do with that information? So these are metric based data and it's who's working on what essentially and it seems like it would be categorized by spaces and project boards and so forth so uh, yeah what would you do with it we can onboard it easily but is it valuable and what do you plan to do with it then to me that's where the tool development comes in is now we know what we we will plan to do with that information and that informs what how you know what to do with the tool and I don't know. I actually don't know. What would you do with that? I'm actually interrupting you. Sorry. Uh, what? I, I'm kind. I kind of got lost. But you mentioned Survey Monkey. How would you? How would that be? Uh, how would you integrate those with all this other stuff? That's kind of. Oh, I, I. I'm just curious about that because you did mention that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, so, yeah. oh, but a couple ideas that came to mind with me previously is is you know as we're having these meetings. Um, the AI bot is helping to identify action items, uh, decision items, and um, questions. You know, so, so it's trying to categorize some of the, the the thoughts that are being conversed during a, a meeting. And if it can highlight, hey, it seems like you guys keep having these conversations, or this is a contention point. And it surfaces it up as either a decision item or a, this needs to be a discussion. Then you could potentially just have a button that clicks and says, "Okay, create a survey," you know, and 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 um, broadcast that survey. Put it on t uh, Twitter and LinkedIn or whatever the case is, uh, and then it would actually capture those uh, results and then send it back to your knowledge management system. So what would you do with a survey's response? Mm, I'm thinking like, you know, what was the, uh, you can ask, you know, now that it has an entire uh, database of responses, you can ask it, what was the number one result for this? And um, were there any additional questions or notes or, you know, really just prompt it for that information instead of having to scour through all the results, you can just simply prompt it. That's just my one thought, but it's a way of like consensus, right? Is if, if the AI is helping you identify where or what we should be asking the community or a areas of, of problems or something, and then send out a survey to get more narrow results. And then how, what can we do with those? You know, how, how valuable is that information? Okay. That's that, that kind of gets me sparked up because, uh, I'd like to be involved in something like that. So I'm going to do some homework. <clears throat> Very cool. And Nebio, do you have any uh, questions, additions you would want to do this on, on the idea of what kind of components are required to build the sustainable open source community infrastructure? Uh, I don't know at uh, which point you'll be discussing this or if you already have. Like, is there any discussions on similar projects or similar activities that other groups are doing or how to collaborate with them because 
I know like uh, Lido Nation is doing, is trying to do something in this area without the AI, well, he hasn't mentioned AI. And also in our previous circle of meetings, we've discussed this several times on the need of all that you mentioned. Again, one issue that we did not raise, which I see that you guys have addressed already is the use of AI. And because just the amount of data, I think Curtis also mentioned it much earlier, how all this information is just too much to handle, it's just everywhere. And that's also what we've been discussing, pulling it together, like having one source for people to easily understand and be able to communicate with it. That is also in our circle meeting today, something that we raised. Again, like you guys are, are getting ahead of the curve in terms of uh, the tools that you're thinking of. So I just wanted to know if uh, at which point you'll be discussing uh, possible collaborations or uh, how you'll be partnering up with other projects that are doing similar activities. Yeah, good question. I, I, I come across a lot of um, meetings where this is a concern that's brought up and probably come across a dozen or so uh, solutions that are addressing, you know, maybe one particular uh, silo of the problem. But I see a lot and I haven't actually started real collaboration. Um, I am participating as uh, a member of some nonprofit organization in Cardano where they're trying to build a developer open uh, open source ecosystem. Uh, but no, not, to be honest, really haven't collaborated with anybody. And I know there's a lot of opportunity to do that. I guess I'm struggling with time management, to be honest. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, even with just the, to start off with in terms of using them uh, like data to like the input of data as QADA or like Swarm and uh, QADA have a good source, but also there is other communities that are just, this information is just so dispersed so much everywhere. Uh, like even to get this information out to the community so that people can feed you that data is I think much important. Like, I mean, you need it, you need the data to get all these things rolling. Yeah, um, I'd even like that idea, which was a minor thought that came across my mind, was, which was it, those are uh, data sources and data sets that you have an insight.iq account. You're like, oh, I like everything that's coming from QADAO or Lido. I'm just going to click, you know, subscribe. <laughs> and it just pulls all that information into your own knowledge management system that you can derive from. Uh, but yeah, I. I know Lido Nation's working on something similar. I have seen it. it. And like you said, it didn't have AI. So I started to just sort of go on my own fork and because our visions are quite different. But I think there's enough similarities that we have the same mission. We have the same goal. So mine as well. I don't really know where to go to have that type of conversation. Um, at breakout rooms, I'm always busy in, in some other breakout room have to figure that out yeah one of these hopes with this mini proposal workshops is to show that uh, the, there's a heavy work on the proposal already and it's open source and it's shown how kind of how do we strategically change over week and week the tactics and which direction we can go at i wouldn't mind having like a like different meetings somewhere else. And even if Cortis doesn't have time, I'm able to join in and capture more feedback and then combine all of this data. The goal with this mini proposal workshop, I would, my hope is that in the end, we were able to scope down on the solution. And once we finish entire this workshop with that specific scope down solution, we have a full basically work plan uh, which anybody can take and be like, oh, I only need 20,000 to to this component, which is just huge one component from the bigger picture. But that will then also show how would you do another component. So it, I wouldn't even, I would actually see that would be amazing if different communities pick different AI tools they would want to do. And uh, we kind of get like in, into sync that one is working on like infrastructure, some are working on integrations and some are working with the 
communicating with different working groups and communities of the special features they need and then aggregating together into like a specialty list of different like developer teams like i'm gonna take this feature i'm gonna take this feature and then rolling it out in like a more stack phase but that's all very utopic right now especially when the catalyst has shown a bit of slowdown and and like that kind of open collaboration so the hope is still high and that's why i'm here and once this is coming back i think the next iteration when people are coming with the same enthusiasm to pull it together i think we are more ready to give like plans and and help people do align on what each of these groups are doing or what teams are working on what yeah, thanks Tivo. that's that that was inspirational cuz it you know it can definitely feel like overwhelming when i take on this is what i want to build and it's really just me and one other guy right now <laughs> so it feels overwhelming but having access to that and that is what i was hoping to do is is like light donation builds a solution or QA DAO builds some other solution and part of our uh, governance and consensus are actually existing solutions. Just bring them all together into that dashboard. And so this is, that's good. That's helpful. Thank you, Timo. All right, let's do some uh, progress then uh, in terms of uh, selecting our scope down. And um, so what I'm trying to do is I know a little bit color coding them. Um, so I colored orange three of these main pillars, dashboard, uh, bots, and community collaboration. Each of these sections live into a different area, which are yellow ones. An AI bot has uh, many of them, and the rest of the ones don't really have that much. So. Uh, let's do it like that. Uh, and I'm going to also color these integrations into final color and let's put them green. And now I'm going to share my robot link again. So tools who have the bandwidth and the ability to join my robot, I will start the voting and what I have in mind this time is that we're going to do basically three votes uh, in one go. So I will give one vote to everybody to select one of these orange boxes. Then I will give one vote to... Uh, then I give... Hmm, that's a good question. Then I give... No, no, I have to give two votes. Okay. Two votes for the orange ones so you only vote one one for and then leave one out so we're gonna have like a bit of a battle here then i will also give um hmm, two votes for each of these corners except actually you know, these corners is two votes and including not import data dashboard now that's not needed. I'm gonna also turn. I'm gonna have even more complete. I think I have to write it down. So I'm gonna <laughs> do here one vote for one of these green ones. Then uh, let's give three votes for one of these green ones. So they in the middle green ones. I give three votes and select. So only what one per sticky and I'm basically giving you like a bunch of votes that you have to spread. Then two votes share below on light yellows. Uh, same thing in this up corner, two votes on the up yellows and on the left side because all nearly schools it's quite so. So let's give five votes on the yellow ones in, in here, and including these ones, if you want. 
Yeah. So all the sticky notes, don't vote on the white ones. And I give you 14 votes. So gotcha. the main consensus that was that we should focus on dashboard, building a dashboard, and not focus on any of the AI tools. But if we do focus on AI tools, great meeting summaries seems to be the, the main blocker on everybody's mind. And hmm. on the, if we take community collaboration, then operations to establish norms and standards is the main focus point there. Ahushkawa, what is that? Something big here, this got integration <laughs> and Zoom integration. How much of that voting power is there? Even though I brought the concern that dashboard may not be sexy, uh, looks like it's still not a good argument enough to not start with that. <laughs> so we just ended our voting. We got a nice uh, result. I added it on the right side. Uh, as a vote, I already kind of went over that. Now, how do you feel about others? Does this give us a um, more accurate representation of where we should scope down our activities going forward? Um, maybe. Uh, sorry, I, I heard you mention earlier that the AI tools do not get a lot of votes. Which is uh, on the, and the, were you referring to the the audio dissemination AI bots? Yes. Uh, I was under the assumption that the AI bots, if it's not audio dissemination, that they would still be including the text activities. Oh. It's just the audio part, which I was a bit confused about. That's why. Okay, that's great feedback, and that may change. Mm -hmm. A lot. Does anybody else have the um, understanding, uh, like a different understanding, that um, what one mission was that these orange ones are basically the main components of this underlying huge vision we have, and we are going to scope down to one of these elements, and based on what we select of these. There we will put more focus on on forward. Um, so what I will do is I'm gonna give two votes to everybody, one minute, and I'm going to select these sticky notes again and start the voting so that everyone can select again two sticky notes, one vote each to show which uh, direction you would scope down to either dashboard is basically knowledge management and integrating uh, basically information into dashboard community collaboration is creating more connections before we even start and, and like with the community standard of how do we create our infrastructure and how do we um, do the strategy to implement bots and who could do bots and maybe even find partners who already have AIs. And the final option is to do the bots ourselves and then figure out the infrastructure and collaboration of where to use them. Oh, the game has changed. <laughs> And this means we are now in the battle of two. And like a great person called Big Champion told us, if you want to scope down, we need to run voting multiple times. So now we have this dashboard, this audio management. And because we are already going into this AI's uh, direction, um, yeah, here we have a clear winner. So 
let's <laughs> i wonder do we want to no i think actually no we don't have to. let's just do voting for both of these and only one vote so finalizing our direction and although this now very <laughs> a lot shows that we are still uncertain which direction to go to so we can also keep that in mind and over this week as we join into this um, tomorrow wednesday um, before the town hall and to the catalyst town hall i would even perhaps take this discussion to there and bring up the voting and then again and see how the audience in catalyst town hall thinks which direction to scope down to but i'm just curious what happens if we kind of Force down to one to one. This was a very difficult decision for me. <laughs> me too. Me too. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. That is that is the outcome. Yeah, no. we definitely need want some more audience um, on the background for that. Um, but with this. I would conclude the scoping down chapter, even though we didn't get very good result, we got quite some discussion out of that and something to present in the Catalyst Town Hall and to capture feedback there. All right, then let's take another chapter and dive into proposal title edition. Oh, actually, I think brand name we have, however, if got this, uh, doesn't mind changing that stuff, then we all can start ideating on that. And then ideating on proposal titles. And right now, let's let's come um, again high level out of these scope down solutions and put on on our mind to entire this infrastructure we're building. So then into a sustainable open source community infrastructure that provides an AI tool to automate meeting documentation and retrieve insights. So in the state of all of these components we are talking about, all of them has a minimum viable uh, component already out. And if it does, what would be the name of that proposal what provides all of these features? Um, yeah, Take, you can use Zoom chat and come up with some names, some ideas. And let's see if we can wrap up in five minutes some cool words. And then we do again some heat map voting if we get then enough uh, titles down on board. It's just to clarify, Tiva, you said these titles are the overall, like all of the features, or yes, are are we breaking it down for the the thought of multiple proposals? Mm. Right now, we will do the title for the big one, so the all of the features. But yes, you can keep in mind that once we resolve after this, basically next week, once we get some more feedback on the scope down uh, expectations, we will do this again. I think we have collected a bunch of names here and let's put a mind on what others have been writing down and uh, i'm going to create the voting for us on this yellow area i will be giving so we have three i'm gonna give three votes to the top option and four votes to the below options um, but here are the results okay. so insight iq looks like the original uh, is to rip, rip hat in here or to, to stay in here but open meet is another one which is trying to over top you <laughs> so keep in mind and regarding proposal titles and looks again, you have captured the 
best proposal title so far. But I'm looking for these um, bottom ones um, that addressing the um, like more closely the solution item, some found value in that and kind of to be a good solution to pick up. Um, but yeah, this this is as simple as it sounds. This chapter, I did on some options, do some voting, get some results, and if you are not happy with that, you can do it again. Any final comments or learnings from today's meeting? Yeah, thanks, Tivo. This was good. I, I like getting everybody's uh, feedback and hearing all the different thoughts and it helps me explore my own thoughts as well. So this is good. I got a lot of value out of this. Thank you. Yeah, I really, I got somewhere to a lot further than I was uh, two weeks ago. So yeah, I, I, I just a lot further two weeks ago than not the, not the meeting from last week, but the, the meeting from the week before I was really lost, but then, uh, Last week's meeting, I I started getting it. Now I'm now I'm really sparked up, and I kind of know where I'm heading. So it's yeah, it's amazing. I'm just excited because I want to see the result and start using the tool, and it makes everybody's lives easier. So thank you, Dave and Kurtz, and the whole team. I got nothing to add. Nothing to add. You don't even want these tools. <laughs> and, all right. Then, yeah, from my own side, I think that was a great session. It, uh, we didn't progress perhaps on the templates themselves, but I think it was very important to establish a direction uh, with the problem and uh, solutions we have gone so far and in the end I'd rather take it uh, slow and steady than just force something out of here thanks for joining thanks for watching thanks for keeping in touch and see you out there